When I started putting myself in my videos, I found that it was more interesting to start using multiple camera angles. Using different camera angles and positions helps keep a video flowing. It's a useful tool for showing more information. Like this presentation I made about memes that I think are funny. It's so relatable. Or more realistically, I can use it to show different locations. Like my bathroom, or my closet, or my garage. Which you'll probably see more of in future videos. Not too much for this video. But the issue with moving around my camera so much is that I can't see what the camera is looking at. So every time I move it, I have to do this like weird, awkward thing to make sure that I'm still like, wait, actually. <laughs> to make sure that I'm still in frame. But that's an issue I'm hoping to solve with this video using this HDMI screen and a bit of 3D printing. So let's get started. So this here is my camera. This is the Sony A6000. And it's been working pretty good. And it does have a little flip up screen, but I still can't see myself from the front. And I'd really like to be able to see myself while I'm filming because I'm very handsome and I like looking at myself. But also because it helps me get myself in frame. So the Sony A6000 actually comes with a micro HDMI port on the side. And they did this because they had the same idea I did where you can put a monitor on the top and they sell it. But I'm not gonna buy it. No, I'll just make my own. So as it turns out, I actually already have a bunch of these like little HDMI screens, those two and this one. And the whole reason I have these is because I was making a second version to this. This is a portable gaming device. It runs on a Raspberry Pi, but as you can tell, it kind of sucks. It was really uncomfortable to hold because it's very square. And I'm going to revisit this project, so you should totally subscribe if you want to see that project. Uh, but I wasn't able to buy Raspberry Pis anymore, so it kind of got shelved, and I just sort of left with these screens. But now, I found a use for it. So the plan here is simple. I'm just going to use an HDMI cable to connect the camera to the screen. But, how do I power the screen? I want it to be portable, which means I'm going to want it to be battery powered. And that's where this cool little board comes in. This is a board based on the IP5306 chip, which describes itself as a power bank SOC. This thing is capable of both charging the batteries I'm going to use and powering the screen. It can do five volts at 2.4 amps output. That means the screen, since it only draws 850 milliamps, it is plenty for it. And I have a little extra headroom if I want to power some other things through a USB port on the side of the screen. So to connect the chip, I'm going to use a USB Type-C header that I bought from Amazon. I'm going to connect the power pins from the Type-C header directly to the, the charging input pins. And then I'm going to connect the data pins directly to the screen so I can still use the touch screen on the screen itself. And that's the whole plan. But which of the three screens do I have should I use? Nope. Yeah, this one works. And this one kind of works. After thinking about it, I'm actually gonna go with this screen for this project. Even though it's not showing the picture correctly, I am gonna use the this little portable monitor here for other purposes, like maybe a teleprompter, um, and not only for the camera, so it'll work perfectly for other devices. Uh, versus this screen here, and while this one worked perfectly, this screen, being smarter, and having the ability to use speakers, that's what this output is here, I'm actually gonna save this one to use for the new portable gaming device. Again, feel free to sub if you wanna see that project. So let's talk about the 3D model for this project. Since I plan on mounting it to the top of the camera, I need to use what's called the shoe mount. Um, and so I need to design a, a shoe to fit on the top of the camera to mount the, the screen. And because this screen is going to be pretty heavy, I need to mount and design a pretty beefy shoe. And here it is. As you can see, it's got the, the shoe mount at the bottom and the top is threaded. The reason I make the top threaded is that so it can now screw into the rest of the screen. And that means I can switch it out for different sorts of mounts in case I don't want to use specifically a shoe mount. But I bet you're curious why I cut off half the threads. So this is an important thing when designing parts to be 3D printed, and that you want to think about the direction of the force when the part is going to be used, especially for functional parts. If I printed this standing up, 
that would make the direction of the force when the screen is leaning back and forth. Basically, it'll pull against the layers and split the layers and be much weaker. So by cutting off half the threads, I can print it flat. And that made the layers go this way, which there is no forces pushing in between the layers gonna split it when it is um, being used. So that's why it's missing half the threads. It's actually to make it stronger, believe it or not. I also added a hole through the middle to add an M5 bolt. Um, it's probably overkill, but there's an M5 bolt in there. From there, I designed two nuts, one nut to clamp it down onto the shoe mount of the camera, and then another nut to clamp the screen to the shoe mount itself. All of the parts were printed in Eson PLA Plus on my spiffy brand new Voron 2.4. This is a three piece design consisting of a front piece, a back piece, and then a middle piece, which I used to mount everything to. This middle piece is what mounted the USB ports, the battery sleds, and then that charging board that I'm so happy about. I'm using two 18650 batteries in parallel, uh, and I'm using these little battery sleds that have the wires on the bottom, so those had to be installed first because I had to pre-solder the wires. And then from there, after installing the ports and things, it was really just a matter of soldering it all up. My plan was to do it really neatly with this solid core wire I have, uh, but I think I got a little impatient and it's just sort of like, I mean, it's okay. It doesn't look that great, but it's like, it's okay, I guess. So from there, after using a bunch of self-tapping M3 screws, you put on the back panel and believe it or not, it's done, that's it. So that's it, it works. I'm actually using it right now. But let's do a little post-mortem. What things would I change if I was redoing this project from scratch? Well, first and obviously, I'd probably switch out the screen with one that properly works. I know I do have one, but I want to save that one. I would probably research and find a screen that works specifically for this camera. Um, so one that supports a 1080p resolution is apparently what this camera wants. Secondly, I would probably try to use LiPo batteries, like the flat ones, rather than the 18650s. Part of the reason I'd use the 18650s and the, the screen that doesn't work is it's just what I had on hand. The only thing I bought for this project was actually the USB Type-C header which I figured I'd use in other projects, so I, I don't mind having a few of them, and they were really cheap. And then as far as the design of the thing itself, it's, it's nice, but it is kind of thick. But in my defense, when I was making it, it just seemed like, it just seemed like the right decision just to make it a nice thick boy, a nice meaty boy. I don't know why, it just seemed like it should be thick. As far as the things I do like, the design, that thread on the bottom where I can replace the shoe mount with something else, like a different stand, is awesome. The USB port on the side is great because that is actually going to help me in a future project of maybe making a ring light. I am very happy with how sturdy it is. I did have to design this part to be very strong. So I'm impressed with how sturdy it came out and how good it feels on the camera. But yeah, I mean, that's really about it. It's a fairly simple project. You know, thanks for sticking around and watching. Uh, I do plan on, on addressing more complicated projects like the ones I have planned in the future, but I'm still kind of figuring out this whole video editing thing. So it's just one step at a time here. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see some more projects. Oh, and if you want to recreate this project, I'm going to upload the Fusion 360 and all the 3D models to printables with a little list of all the parts I used. So, thanks.